Unveiling a futuristic weapon at sea. In April 2025, Japan dramatically lifted the veil on a weapon straight out of science fiction, a ship-mounted electromagnetic railgun now poised on the deck of its test vessel, J.S. Asuka. On April 22nd, Admiral Saito, Chief of Staff of the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, JMSDF, stepped aboard Asuka to personally inspect this prototype system. The visit, announced via official channels, marked a significant milestone in Japan's quest to operationalize next-generation naval weaponry. Just days earlier, the JMSDF had released the first close-up images of the railgun in action, showing Vice Admiral Katsushi Omachi, commander of the self-defense fleet, observing the turret during a test. These events heralded the dawn of a new era in naval warfare for Japan, as the nation proudly showcased how it is turning a once experimental concept into reality. A railgun is a revolutionary weapon that uses electromagnetic force, rather than gunpowder or explosives, to hurl projectiles at extremely high velocities. By relying on pure kinetic energy instead of traditional warheads, railguns can launch shells at hypersonic speeds far beyond the limits of conventional artillery. In practical terms, this means a railgun round can travel at over 2,000 meters per second, around Mach 6.5, delivering devastating impact on targets. Unlike missiles, these projectiles are non-explosive and much smaller, making them harder for an enemy to detect or intercept mid-flight. The system's velocity, energy, and range can also be tuned as needed, offering a flexible response to different threats. Altogether, Japan's railgun promises a cost-effective and rapid defensive capability, one that could counter incoming missiles, aircraft, or even swarming small boats with unprecedented speed and accuracy. Railguns offer a suite of battlefield advantages that make them a potential game-changer. Their hypersonic muzzle velocity translates to greater range, flatter trajectories, and intense kinetic punch upon impact. The absence of any explosive propellant or warhead simplifies logistics and improves safety aboard ship. There's no risk of onboard munitions detonating since the ammo is just metal rounds. These weapons can draw from a deep electric magazine. As long as there is power, a ship can keep firing solid projectiles, enabling high volume, sustained fire in combat. Finally, the cost per shot is relatively low compared to firing an interceptor missile or guided weapon, which makes railguns ideal for fending off saturation attacks or engaging numerous targets without quickly depleting a ship's stores. In short, the electromagnetic railgun embodies a disruptive combination of speed, power, efficiency, and resilience that is pushing the boundaries of naval warfare technology. Japan's journey with railgun technology began in the mid-2010s when the Ministry of Defense's Acquisition, Technology and Logistics Agency, ATLA, initiated a research program to explore electromagnetic acceleration systems. Full-scale development kicked off in 2016 under ATLA's Ground Systems Research Center, and early goals were ambitious. Engineers aimed for a muzzle velocity of 2,000 meters per second and a barrel life of at least 120 rounds of continuous firing. After years of experimentation, these benchmarks have largely been met. By adopting new barrel materials and advanced electrical controls, the Japanese team demonstrated that even after 120 shots, the rail's wear and tear remained minimal and performance stayed consistent. Notably, Japan's prototype railguns of around 40 mm caliber have successfully fired projectiles at velocities exceeding 2,000 meters per second, approximately Mach 6.5 one of the highest achieved speeds for any railgun in the world. This steady progress signaled that many of the long-standing hurdles, such as barrel erosion and power management, could be overcome with persistent innovation. Japan's efforts culminated in a historic first test firing at sea in October 2023, when a prototype railgun aboard the JS Asuka blasted a projectile over the ocean. This was the world's first known official shipboard railgun firing, and it proved that the system could function in a realistic maritime environment. With this breakthrough, ATLA moved into a new phase of development titled Research on Future Railgun, FY 2022-FY2026, to transform the experimental weapon into a viable operational system. This current phase focuses on several critical aspects needed for a deployable weapon, including Continuous firing capability, developing the ability to fire multiple rounds in quick succession, 
Previous tests were mostly single shots, but an operational railgun must shoot repeatedly to intercept swarms of missiles or engage several targets in a battle. Advanced fire control system, designing targeting and guidance electronics to control the railgun in combat. The system must integrate with ship sensors to track incoming threats, calculate firing solutions at extreme speeds, and ensure each hypervelocity shot finds its mark. Projectile stability and accuracy, refining the ammunition and launch process so that each projectile remains aerodynamically stable after exiting the barrel. Even at hypersonic speed, a spinning or poorly stabilized projectile would quickly lose accuracy and range. Improved design will maintain a flatter trajectory and higher impact precision. One of the greatest technical challenges in this endeavor is securing a reliable power supply for the railgun. Firing a projectile electromagnetically requires an immense electrical pulse on the order of several megajoules of energy, especially if doing so repeatedly. This demands robust onboard generators and capacitors to charge the rails for each shot. However, space and weight on ships are limited, so simply installing huge generators isn't feasible. As a result, Japan's researchers are also working to miniaturize the power and cooling systems associated with the railgun. Innovations in compact energy storage and rapid capacitor charging are underway to ensure that a warship can provide the necessary power bursts without sacrificing other onboard systems. Overcoming this power challenge is key to making the railgun a practical weapon on future warships. Ship central to Japan's railgun project is the JS Asuka ASE-6102, the Maritime Self-Defense Force's dedicated experimental trial ship. Commissioned in 1995 and built by Sumitomo Heavy Industries, the Asuka was designed from the keel up as a platform to test and validate advanced naval technologies. At approximately 151 meters long and displacing around 6,200 tons, the vessel resembles a destroyer in form but is not deployed for combat missions. Instead, it serves as a floating laboratory for the Fleet Research and Development Command. Asuka's engineering is geared for flexibility. It features a modular deck and interchangeable mission systems, allowing new weapons and sensors to be installed and swapped out with relative ease. Powered by two LM2500 gas turbines, enabling speeds up to approximately 27 knots, and crewed by about 70 sailors plus up to 100 technicians, the ship has ample space and personnel to support complex experiments at sea. Over its career, JS Asuka has hosted a wide array of cutting-edge projects that later became staples of Japan's fleet. For example, the ship was used to trial the FCS-3 Aegis radar system, advanced sonar suites, vertical launch anti-submarine rockets, and new torpedo models all of which have since been deployed on frontline JMSDF warships. The addition of the electromagnetic railgun to Asuka's test repertoire is the vessel's most ambitious upgrade to date. The prototype railgun turret is mounted on Asuka's aft deck, where a helicopter landing pad would typically be, an area that provides the open space and structural support needed for the bulky system. During Vice Admiral Omachi's April visit, this turret was seen protruding from the stern, a stark emblem of futurist firepower. By installing and firing the railgun on Asuka, Japan can evaluate how the weapon integrates with a ship's systems and crew in real-world conditions, from power draw and heat dissipation to targeting procedures and recoil management. Importantly, the JMSDF leadership's active involvement, exemplified by Admiral Saito's personal inspection, underscores how strategically significant this project is for Japan. The Ministry of Defense envisions the railgun as a transformative asset for the nation's defense. Once perfected, a naval railgun could serve as a multi-role weapon for both offense and defense. Intercepting high-speed airborne threats like cruise missiles or hypersonic gliders and striking surface targets such as enemy ships or coastal installations. By validating the railgun at sea on Asuka, Japan is moving closer to fielding it on future frontline warships which would put the country at the forefront of naval innovation. In the words of JMSDF officials, this close collaboration between the Self-Defense Fleet and ATLA on emerging technologies is aimed at ensuring Japan's maritime security and maintaining a technological edge amid evolving threats. If deployed successfully, Japan's electromagnetic railgun 
would fundamentally enhance the defensive shield around its maritime forces and home islands. One primary envisioned role is missile defense. Modern cruise missiles and even new hypersonic missiles pose a grave challenge to existing ship defenses due to their speed and maneuverability. A railgun, however, could shoot them down by sending out swarms of high-velocity projectiles, effectively creating a wall of tungsten or steel in the path of an incoming missile. Because each railgun shot costs only a tiny fraction of a guided interceptor missile, a warship armed with such a gun could economically blunt a mass missile attack. The kind of saturation strike that potential adversaries might employ in the Western Pacific. By integrating railguns alongside traditional surface-to-air missile systems, Japan hopes to establish a layered air defense network capable of defeating even the fastest threats. In fact, Japanese defense planners explicitly see railguns as a countermeasure to emerging hypersonic weapons, which travel too fast for many current interceptors to handle. Beyond air defense, railguns could also excel in long-range naval fire support and coastal defense. With an estimated range of up to 200 kilometers for future iterations, a land-based railgun battery on Japan's coast might engage hostile warships far out at sea, well before they come within range of their own weapons. The sheer velocity of a railgun slug means it could punch through a ship's hull or critical components with kinetic force alone, without needing an explosive warhead. This makes it a potent coastal artillery piece that could help deter enemy fleets from approaching Japanese shores. Likewise, on the offensive side, a railgun-armed vessel could bombard enemy positions on land or enemy ships at standoff distances, supplementing or even replacing traditional naval guns and cruise missiles in certain scenarios. The versatility of being effective against air, sea, and ground targets is a major attraction of railgun technology for military strategists. It's important to note that Japan's push for railguns is happening against a backdrop of increasing regional threats. North Korea has drastically stepped up its missile testing program in recent years, launching dozens of ballistic missiles, some of them over Japanese territory, and even new long-range cruise missiles that fly at low altitude. Pyongyang has also claimed to test hypersonic glide vehicles, which would be even harder to intercept if they become operational. At the same time, China's military expansion and assertiveness have heightened Japan's security concerns. Beijing's arsenal now includes a vast number of ballistic and cruise missiles, and Chinese rocket forces have reportedly practiced targeting the network of U.S. bases and allied infrastructure in Japan. Tokyo is acutely aware that any conflict, for instance a contingency involving Taiwan, could see Japan itself come under direct missile attack given the heavy presence of U.S. forces on its soil. This environment has spurred Japan to invest in new defensive technologies like the railgun, alongside other systems such as improved missile shields and even its own developing hypersonic weapons program. In essence, Japan's railgun is part of a broader effort to bolster homeland defense and protect its forces against the advanced weaponry fielded by potential adversaries. Around the world, electromagnetic railguns have been a subject of intense research by major militaries, but few have pushed as far as Japan is now. The United States Navy was initially the front runner in railgun development. Throughout the 2010s, the U.S. invested heavily in prototyping a large-caliber railgun and tested it extensively in partnership with BAE Systems and other contractors. Those tests achieved some impressive feats, launching projectiles at speeds over Mach 7 and hitting targets at ranges well over 100 nautical miles. The U.S. even envisioned equipping its Zumwalt-class destroyers with railguns as their main armament. However, by the early 2020s, the U.S. railgun program ran into practicality issues and shifting priorities. The technology worked, but the power requirements, barrel wear, and integration challenges proved daunting. In 2021, the Pentagon made the strategic decision to effectively cancel the railgun project, reallocating funds toward developing hypersonic missiles and other high-tech weapons. Thus, after spending over a decade and half a billion dollars, the U.S. shelved its once-promising railgun, at least for the time being, in favor of other solutions. China, meanwhile, has been aggressively pursuing railgun technology with an eye toward naval deployment. In 2018, images emerged on Chinese social media of a large railgun turret mounted on the deck of a Chinese Navy test ship, a Type 0723 landing ship called Haiyangshan. This caused a worldwide buzz as it suggested China had built a working prototype and was conducting sea trials. Since then, Beijing has remained secretive about the progress and results of its tests. 
No official confirmations have been made public, but many analysts believe China continues to refine its design. If operational, a Chinese railgun could similarly be used to target ships or as part of an anti-ship missile defense. Outside of the US and China, other countries have dabbled in electromagnetic weapons but remain far behind. Russia, India, and South Korea have all announced research into railguns or related technologies, yet none have demonstrated a ship-mounted prototype or notable test success to date. Turkey has publicly tested a smaller-scale railgun for its army in recent years, and some European nations have shown interest in the science. Overall, however, Japan's recent accomplishments at sea have arguably moved it to the forefront of this field now that the American program is on pause. In the global race for railgun capability, Japan is seizing the momentum that others have lost. Japan's commitment to electromagnetic railguns is not happening in isolation. It's part of a comprehensive strategy to modernize and enhance the country's defense capabilities amid a challenging security environment. Along with the railgun, Japan is developing its own hypersonic glide vehicles and long-range missiles, strengthening alliances and rethinking its forced posture to address threats from multiple fronts. The recent railgun trials aboard JS Asuka have sent a clear signal that Japan intends to lead in at least one cutting-edge area of military tech. Admiral Saito's high-profile inspection of the test unit was as much a message to the world as it was a morale boost to the engineers. Japan is serious about fielding this weapon. In looking toward the future, Japan is already laying groundwork for deploying railguns on its next generation of warships. Plans have been mentioned to integrate a more advanced railgun system into the upcoming 13,000-ton class destroyers, 13DDX, that the JMSDF aims to introduce in the 2030S. These future destroyers are being designed with extra power generation capacity in space precisely to accommodate directed energy weapons and electromagnetic guns. Naval architects envision ships where a railgun could sit alongside laser weapons and modern missile launchers, forming a multi-layered defense DAS offense suite. Japanese defense officials have even showcased concept art of a Maya-class 27DDG destroyer fitted with a railgun turret, highlighting that this is not just theoretical, they are planning for it. Before any of that happens, further testing and refinement will continue on Asuka and possibly land-based sites to ensure the system can fire reliably, accurately, and safely in all conditions at sea. Japan is also leveraging international cooperation to accelerate its railgun development. In 2024, ATLA signed a cooperative research agreement with the French-German Research Institute of St. Louis, ISL, to collaborate on railgun technologies, pooling expertise on power systems, materials, and projectile design. Japanese engineers have been exchanged with their French and German counterparts as part of this effort. Around the same time, Reports emerged that Japan dispatched a defense official to liaise with the U.S. Navy and glean lessons from the now-halted American railgun program, an example of gaining know-how from allies even when their projects didn't reach fruition. This global collaboration underscores that Japan views the railgun as a strategic investment worth pursuing in concert with friendly nations, potentially speeding up breakthroughs that would be harder to achieve alone. As other nations slow or sideline their railgun ambitions, Japan is moving decisively forward. The ongoing experiments aboard JS Asuka underscore a broader shift in naval defense strategy, one that embraces next-generation capabilities to ensure Japan's maritime superiority in the Indo-Pacific. While challenges remain and full deployment is still on the horizon, Japan's ship-mounted railgun project has already made history. It represents not only a triumph of engineering, but also a statement of intent. In the face of evolving threats, Japan will push the boundaries of innovation to defend its skies and seas.